Welcome to Worship Together today. We remember on this Sunday the loss of life in the African American or Black community in the church known as Mother Emmanuel. And we lament and grieve over the injustices which Black Americans are subjected to daily. As part of the 2019 ELCA Churchwide Assembly, voting members adopted a resolution designating June 17th as a commemoration day for the martyrdom of the Emanuel Nine, whereby nine black persons were shot and killed by a young white supremacist on June 17th, 2015, during Bible study at Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charlestown, South Carolina, in the church often known belovedly as Mother Emanuel. Pastors Pinckney and Simmons were both graduates of the Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary and lost their lives as well on that day. Congregations of the ELCA are encouraged to reaffirm their commitment to self-examination and repentance of the sins of institutionalized racism and white supremacy which continue to plague African-American churches today. We venerate today the martyrdom of the Emmanuel Nine who rest safely now in the justice of heaven.
Let's gather our hearts and minds for worship now and in thanksgiving for our holy baptism, which is with us our whole life. In today's holy stories, we may remember the continued presence of God with us in all circumstances, in joy, in wonder, in grief, and in repentance. Through the Holy Spirit, Jesus continues to abide with us, seekers, followers, Christian leaders in every generation, transformed to be the body of the risen Christ in the world. So let us enter now into worship together, where today in all ways we may celebrate that we are beloved. We celebrate with hymns of praise. We gather around sacred words to learn or to remember their blessings for us, even now. And we rejoice in the resurrection and hearing this good news proclaim God's faithfulness to us. We may begin by making the sign of the cross, first marked upon us at our holy baptism and marking ourselves in remembrance today on our forehead or on our whole body. In this cross of our signing, we have been blessed by Christ in the waters of baptism and raised with him into new and eternal life. In our mortal experience in heaven before us, let us give thanks again on this day for the gift of baptism and the waters of life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. A Lament for the Captives and the Church, adapted to prayer by Pastor Sandra from a justice statement by the ELCA. As a church in Christ, we confess that across generations, the church has been silent in the face of racial injustice. On behalf of the ancestors in our lives, we confess the sin of racism that is embedded in American culture, forged in the abduction of black souls from their country of origin, and perpetuated in enslavement by the trafficking of systemic discrimination and poverty. It is not a life that we seek for others or for ourselves. Therefore, we must condemn racist rhetoric and the ideologies of white supremacy. God have mercy, God have mercy. In self-reflection of our history, we confess the sins of our ancestors and perpetuation of these sins in our nation, racial segregation, extrajudicial killings by law enforcement, and disproportionate incarceration of people of color. God have mercy, God have mercy. The sin of racism divides and separates the children of God in all colors. We lament the discrimination in the call of pastors and other leaders of ELCA churches, inequitable compensation, and failure to fully include the gifts of leadership and worship for black people, indigenous people, and people of color. God have mercy. God, have mercy. Remember today that our confessions are empty promises if meaningful actions are not grounded in prayer, education, and soul-searching repentance. We seek the Holy Spirit to help us in the life-giving reconciliation with one another and to tear out the roots of ideologies that promote the supremacy or elevation of the white children of God over the black children of God. God have mercy. God have mercy. Open our eyes, O God. Open our hearts. Open our ears, O God. Open our minds. Help us to behold one another as you behold us. Help us to be more firmly rooted in the practices of the gospel so that when we pray, the way we live will make real the dream of your beloved community with, in, and among us with the help of your truth and grace. And so we cry out, God have mercy upon us. Generations after their abduction, let us finally do what is right. Lead us to do what is right in your holy name in the way of love, especially for those who have been stolen, used, belittled, shamed, forgotten, for their color and their lack of privilege, erasing the beauty of the black skin which you created for them with love. Have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy on us and help us. Amen. Last week, the children and I gathered with the Sunday school teachers to share our thoughts on this idea, which is that we are all made by God and God loves us all. And in following Jesus ways, we may learn to love one another. Jesus calls the children to love one another just as we are, that God has made us all in many colors, from the beauty of the color of night, black, and the other skin tone colors of brown and tan and white. Sometimes other children are not kind to others with dark skin and it hurts our hearts. 
but how may we care? We may lead the children to understand that all children are made in God's image and the beautiful diversity of the ways that we are created. We may teach the children to befriend the lonely, the bullied at school, and to support those who are different in the way that they look or speak or walk. And we may learn to lead the children in prayer with Christian love for those who are ill or afraid or sad and to give thanks for all that we have. The greatest is one another and all that we are in Jesus' name. Amen. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah! The lesson is from the letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. We are no longer God's enemies, but have peace with God because we were brought into a right relationship with God through Christ's death. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Gospel of Matthew 5, 38, 48. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. 
but if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. For you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than the others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's pastoral message is adapted from a sermon from the Reverend Michael Curry, who's the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church of the United States of America. I rarely borrow a pastoral message, but in this case, I do not have the lived experience of a black person. And I know that Bishop Curry's message will speak to our hearts today in a way that is good medicine and understanding for us. The title of his message from May 30th, 2020 is When the Cameras Are Gone, we will still be here. Our long-term commitment to racial justice and reconciliation is embedded in our identity as baptized followers of Jesus. We will still be doing it when the news cameras are long gone. In the midst of COVID-19 and the pressure cooker of a society in turmoil, a Minnesota man named George Floyd was brutally killed. His basic human dignity was stripped by someone who was charged to protect our common humanity. Perhaps the deeper pain is the fact that this was not an isolated incident. It happened to Breonna Taylor on March 13th. It happened at Ahmaud Arbery on February 23rd. Racial terror in this form occurred when Bishop was a teenager growing up black in Buffalo, New York. It extends back to the lynching of Emmett Till in 1955. And well before that, racism is not just our present or our history. Racism has become part of the fabric of American life. But we need not be paralyzed by our past or our present. We are not slaves to fate, but we are people of faith. Our long-term commitment to racial justice and reconciliation is embedded in our identity as followers of Jesus. We will continue the work long after the news cameras are gone. That work of racial reconciliation and justice known as Becoming Beloved Community is a mission happening across the church, across America, and around the world. That mission matters more now than ever, and it is work that belongs to all of us. The work must go on when racist violence and pro police brutality are no longer the front page news. The work must go on when it is no longer fashionable, and the way seems hard and we feel utterly alone. It is the difficult labor of picking up the cross of Jesus, like Simon of Cyrene, and carrying the cross until no one, no matter their color, no matter their class, no matter their caste, until no child of God is degraded and disrespected by anyone. This is God's dream. This is our work. And we shall not cease until God's dream is realized. Is this hopelessly naive? 
No, this is the vision of God's dream, which is no idealistic utopia. It is our only real hope. St. Paul, a former persecutor of Christians who became the greatest evangelist, said in Romans 5.5, 5, Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Real love is the dogged commitment to live our lives in the most unselfish even sacrificial ways to love God, love my neighbor, love the earth, and truly love myself. Perhaps most difficult in times like this, it is even love for my enemy. This is why we cannot condone violence. Violence against any person conducted by police officers or by protesters is violence against a child of God created in God's image. As followers of Christ, we do not condone violence. Neither do we condone our nation's collective complicit silence in the face of injustice and violent death. The anger of so many on our streets is born out of the accumulated frustration that few seem to care when another black, brown, or native life is snuffed out. But there is another way. The parable of the Good Samaritan, where a broken man lay on the side of the road. Religious leaders passed by with indifference. And it was only the Samaritan that saw the wounded stranger and acted. The Samaritan provided medical care and housing the Samaritan made provision for a stranger's well-being and helped and healed a fellow child of God. Love, as Jesus teaches, is action like this, as well as attitude. It seeks the good, the well-being, and the welfare of others, as well as oneself. The way of real love is the only way there is. In this time, we must learn how to practice the way of love, even in pandemic and in uncertainty and in loss. We must learn how to respond to racist violence and police brutality. We must learn how to listen to and learn from communities who have been often ignored or suppressed. And we must learn how to incorporate God's vision of justice into our personal life and into our community prayer life. We must learn how to positively and constructively engage in advocacy and public witness. Opening and changing hearts does not happen overnight. The Christian race is not a sprint. It is indeed a marathon. Our prayers, our work for justice, our work for healing and truth-telling must be unceasing. So may we commit or recommit ourselves to following in the footsteps of Jesus, the only way that leads to healing and justice and love. Amen. A lament commemorating the nine who were slain at Mother Emanuel AME Church, South Carolina, and all who continue to be wounded or harmed in any way due to the color of their skin. They were doing what we are called to do as they engaged in Bible study. It was Wednesday night. A stranger walked in, and they welcomed him to join them in prayer. The Reverend Sharonda Coleman Singleton, Cynthia Marie Graham Hurd, Susie Jackson, Ethel Lee Lance, the Reverend DePayne Middleton Doctor, Tawanza Kibwe Diop Sanders, the Reverend Daniel Lee Simmons, the Reverend 
Mira Singleton Quarries Thompson, and the Honorable State Senator and Pastor of the Church, the Reverend Clementa C. Pinckney, a graduate of Southern Luther Lutheran Seminary in South Carolina. The stranger wanted to ignite a race war, he said, after he shot and killed them, denying them the very humanity he claimed for himself, claiming rights and privileges associated with whiteness. Let us now embrace a time of silent reflection in care and remembrance of those who lost their life while serving the holy community. We will now ring our church bell 10 times, once for each of the nine victims and once for the survivors. Please join us in this time of eight and a half minutes of silence.
Lord have mercy. Eight and a half minutes is a long time without breath. Amen. Let us pray in remembrance of the Emmanuel Nine and for racial justice today. God, our truth, through the ages you have spoken through prophets, stir up in your church a passion for your word revealed in Jesus, that following the witness of the Emmanuel Nine, we, your church, may live by your ways to learn, mark, and inwardly digest the Holy Scriptures, to show hospitality, to pray without ceasing, and to embody prophetic justice in the community. Save us, O God, from ourselves and from racism, often cloaked in pious words, from the machinations of white supremacy hidden in calls for civility, from microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance, from apologies when they don't give way to action, from forgiveness without facing the truth, from reconciliation without reparation. Deliver us, O oh God, from expecting people of color to continue to bear this emotional work which is not theirs to do. Strengthen us all to repent of racism and the sinful supremacy of white skin. Renew our commitment to love and care for all of your people in all colors. In your great mercy, receive our prayer. Amen. Let us pray in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope through Christ of our healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Let's take a moment for personal reflection. Align our ways to your ways, O Christ. We pray for countries, leaders, and benevolent organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. God of justice and care, grant us courage to support justice for your people with black skin, whom you created in love. Lead us to advocate for the voiceless and free those who are oppressed in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding God, you revealed yourself to us in the great healer, Jesus Christ. Embolden us as a church that is mighty in love, and ways of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you count us all as your beloved. Come near to us when we are lost and hear our distress. Heal us with love and in faith. We pray now for those who suffer in any way sharing our prayers out loud or in the silence of our hearts.
For what else do we pray today, spoken aloud or in the quiet of our hearts? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, let us hear your voice within us and guide us. With bold confidence in your love, we trust in your eternal wisdom and your great love for us, both sinner and saint, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. May we share that peace now with those who we are with today. Let us gather into our hearts and minds those who are not with us today, those whom we love and send them peace from our heart. Let us gather into our hearts and minds those with whom we have disagreement or discord and send them peace as well, as Christ would have you do. Let us gather into our hearts and minds the peace that Christ sends to us now. Let us consider the gifts that we have received from the generosity of God gifts of spirit, good health, time and talent, teaching, caring for others, managing finances, building strength, gathering wisdom, the freedom or ability to serve justice in Christ's name. Guide us, O Lord, to teach others your ways. Let us consider how we may share these gifts that were bestowed upon us by God to tend wisely and share generously in Jesus' name. Let us consider those gifts. Thank you, creator of all things, for creating us and blessing us with all that we need. Show us how our gifts may bless others Show us how to be humble and grateful when another shares their blessings with us. Amen. We are in a season of fasting from Holy Communion due to safety restrictions. Yet we are still held fast with communion that we have received and may prayerfully remember now. We remember when bread has been prepared and put into our hands with care and the wine blessed and brought to our lips. Let us pray. O oh Jesus, we remember you in the bread and in the wine and in our spirit where you remain with us in all circumstances. We pray to our Father now with the Lord's Prayer in the translation that we know best. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Grant us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever, without end. Amen.
beloved of God, as we prepare to go back out into the world and all that it bears and struggles with now, and into the week ahead of us, may we receive this good blessing for the journey. May God bless you and keep you. May the face of God shine upon you with grace and with mercy and compassion and grant you true peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and serve the Lord where he may be found. Amen.